Welcome to episode 6 of Do Casinos Cheat, series 1, where we are taking a detailed look at 1,000 spins throughout the series, 100 spins at a time. As usual, we are going to time-lapse the spin results. However, in today's video, we are going to actually play some of the spins to look at what some would call the strange behaviour of the ball. Those of you who have been following the series will understand we have been adding more and more bets to the analysis at the end of the video, and today is no exception. Today we will be looking at what happens when you place random bets. Oh look at that, a win on the first spin, that's nice. We are off to a good start. Right, let's continue with some time-lapsed results. We will stop and look at any interesting spins along the way, and of course review our progress every 25 spins. Two near misses in a row. If you remember back to the last session, the near misses were almost 40% behind expectation. So we can expect a bit of a comeback today. There's a high chance of more than the 21.6 expected near misses for this session. Pocket 21 is one of the sleepiest pockets in the series so far, and followed by 20, the only pocket with no wins from the last session. Right, we are going to watch the next spin as it seems to defy the laws of physics. Watch closely. So that spin actually resulted in a win for us, and it didn't seem to look as bad as we first thought in the replay. Oh, a second win for 20 missing from the last session. Our first double of the day looks like pocket 20 and 31 are purposely missing pocket 14, although pocket 14 is way ahead of expectation for the series, so you could expect it to take a bit of a rest today. 31 again, that's four times in seven spins. So that's nine near misses already. Second win for 12. And we reach our first review point. So, four wins is above expectation. The near misses are also above expectation, but bear in mind the results from the last session where the near misses were almost 40% behind, so this result shouldn't be a surprise. Corner C5 is in the lead again, and we have talked about this corner a fair bit during the series. In the 525 spins played so far, C5 has won 142 times. It's received over 11% more wins than expected, which is significant, especially when you consider this behaviour has been consistent over a number of disconnected sessions. It's not a sudden spike or anomaly. It appears to be a pattern. However, as you will be aware if you've watched the series from the beginning, we have been recording 250 spins before we start the session and another 10 spins after the session. So for the first five sessions, we have actually recorded 1,800 spins in total. C5 has won 438 times, which means it has won 24.3% of the time, which actually falls in line with expectation. Moving on, we can see by the spins list there has been a lot of action near to our scattered pocket bet. The clustered wheel bets are also in play with respectable wins for this point in the session. Let's see what happens next. Thirty-one again, that's six wins in twenty-nine spins. Oh really? 31 again? And we've clocked up another 5 near misses in the last 7 spins. Let's take a look at the next spin. It looks like it lands in 25 and then suddenly gets catapulted out again. However, this looks a bit more innocent when you watch the replay. A 
cheeky win on 15 keeps us in profit. Let's take a look at spin 41. Now that definitely looks like it bounced out of 14 by some mysterious force. Yet the slow-mo version still looks feasible. If you were playing pocket 14 and only considering today's session, then you might find yourself calling foul play. Pocket 14 has had 10 near misses in 41 spins. But if you look at the results from the last five sessions, then 14 is ahead of both of its neighbours. So even though that spin looked a bit suspect, there is no reason to complain. 14 has been ahead for a while, so at the risk of upsetting the phallicists, then it must at some point fall behind. That's just probability at work. It's our perception that plays tricks on us when we are not recording or measuring things accurately. And 11 gives us another win just in time for our next review point. So here we are at spin 50 already. We can see the six wins are just keeping us ahead of expectation. The near misses as we might have guessed from the last session are racing ahead. The other corners are catching up with C5. The spins list just showing us visually what we already know. And one clustered bet has only got half the wins our scattered bet has, while the other one is just in front. Let's see if we can find some more strange spins as they are fun to watch. Ooh, straight in with another win on 15. And 21 making a series comeback with its third win in this session. And followed by 34, which means corner C32 has had four wins in a row. <music> 28 is another underachiever in this series. And followed by 35, which gives us another two near misses in a row. OK, let's have a look at spin 63. That bounce seems a bit suspect. Is it our imagination, or did that ball get repelled out of 31? So, another win for 12. Pockets 11, 12 and 15 doing well today. And if you look at the past results, you can see they all need to catch up a bit, statistically speaking. Isn't this just more evidence that the gambler's fallacy is fiction? It's true the wheel or ball have no memory, but probability never forgets. Twenty eight again, and another near miss. And we reach spin seventy five, so it's time for another quick review. Well, the wins are about as close to expectation as you can get. The near miss is over thirty per cent ahead, but remember they were forty per cent down last session. Corner C5 has been overtaken by two other corners. The spins list is looking fairly normal. One of the clustered bets is as expected, and one is 50% ahead of expectation. So let's move on to the last 25 results for today's session.
Wow, look at that 32, 15, then 19. Three side-by-side -side pockets in a row. Or finally, 14 appears. That's the fourth win today for 20. As we already said, this was the only pocket to sleep in the last session. Another win on 12, so we know we're going to end the session ahead of expectation. And the near misses are definitely making up for the last session. Hey, 14 again, taking us into guaranteed session profit. Nice. And another win. This is a great session. And 21 on the last spin. Five wins today. So it is well on its way to making a series comeback. So that's it, 100 results in. So what happened? With 13 wins being ahead of expectation, we have a session profit. What is strange is the near misses are about 39% ahead of expectation, which makes up for the last session. But how can it be so precise? Is that really just a coincidence? Corner C6 is about 25% down on expectation, with most of its missing hits going to corner C32. The spins list showing a lot of action on and around our scattered bet pockets. And the clustered pockets end up just slightly either side of expectation. But let's dive straight into the results boards now as there is quite a lot of different views going on, and we are going to add some random bets to the mix. So, this is the original results board for our scattered bet covering 11, 12, 14 and 15. You can see the wins are about 5% ahead, which means a tiny profit so far for the series, although we are predicting a loss. But what we are finding hard to believe right now is what happened with the near misses. If you consider each of these 100 spin sessions were played weeks apart, then it seems incredible the results have turned out like this. We would have expected the near misses to balance or catch up with expectation over a few sessions, so how did this happen? Is this just a coincidence, or is probability really looking over our shoulder? Let's compare our scattered bet to the clustered bets. This is the results from all six sessions of 100 spins played so far. Whatever way you look at this, everything is close to expectation showing probability never forgets. You can see there isn't any real difference between playing clustered wheel bets or scattered wheel bets. If we consider the 18s for a minute, you can see the low number bets had a couple of winning sessions followed by a drop, and of course the opposite is true for the high numbers. A couple of losing sessions followed by a higher win. Interestingly, it's red and black that seem to deviate the most from expectation. Could it be that more players on average play red and black than any other kind of bets? If the casinos were manipulating the results, then wouldn't red and black be the most likely to show some bias? I don't think this is enough data to draw any sensible conclusions just yet, but it is something we can take a closer look at over the remaining 400 spins. Interestingly, the dozens deviate more from their expectation than the columns or wheel-based bets. Is it possible that more players would be likely to play the dozens over any other 12 pocket bets? In our results, both the columns and the wheel-based bets are much closer to their expectations than the dozens. Again, this isn't enough data to draw a conclusion, but it stands out enough to warrant our interest. If you have watched some of our recent videos, you will be aware of geometric loss levels, which we hold in high regard in the sense of data being able to help you with meaningful predictive power. So, let's add in today's results. I think the results speak for themselves. There is a definite predictable pattern in the results of random spins from a geometric perspective. You can see how most of today's results fall under the grey line. When you fluently understand why this occurs and can combine such data with other measurements, you will have a greater understanding on how to use such insights to your advantage in designing profitable roulette systems and strategies. So, we can prove patterns exist in random results, and you can make predictions about what is more likely to happen. But now let's look at how you can generate random data to check random results. You might have seen a new tool we have added to our website that allows us to generate random numbers and random sets. For this test, we have a spreadsheet that contains all the results from our 600 spins. 
we have added columns to monitor single pocket bets, four pocket, 12 pocket, and 18 pocket bets. We will use the random number generator to create a thousand results for each of these size bets and add them to the spreadsheet. There, that's the single pockets done. Let's do the same for the four pocket sets. Okay, now we do the same for 12 pocket sets. And finally, we generate 1,000 rows of 18 pocket sets and paste them into the spreadsheet. There, that's done. If you look closely in the result columns, you will see a value of 1 is shown if any of the numbers in the list matches with the pocket that won. So effectively, the value of 1 just means a win. If we then scroll down 600 lines, we can see the total matches or wins for each bet size. We can see we have another 400 sets going off the page, ready for us to use when we play the next four sessions. But for now, let's make a note of the results we got. If we look at the four pocket clustered bet results from earlier, we can see our expectation after 600 spins is 65, so the random sets of pockets we have used would have won exactly the right number of times. Let's see how the 12s have done. Look, that's also very close to expectation, just two wins ahead after 600 spins. The 18s are about 6% ahead, but still fall in line with all the other 18 pocket bets we have been monitoring. If you consider we are monitoring a mixture of different size bets, some are based on the table layout, some are based on the wheel layout, and now we have included completely random sets that change with every spin. All of those bets or sets have results very close to expectation, and all at the same time, it is difficult to detect any bias that the casinos or TV studio may have introduced, or see how they can cheat specific individuals. If we look at all the spins we have played with the results from our scattered bet, you can clearly see there are streaks of wins or losses, and this holds true for any type or size of bet. It's easy to see how our perception might mislead us at times. Our results are being monitored in a very rigid way. Most players will play various amounts of spins in each session, depending on many factors, making it much harder to accurately record and monitor the true results they receive. The biggest problem a roulette player faces is knowing when to stop. Failing to set a profit target is a major reason many players lose. Our brains work against us. We get a few good wins and think, oh, that was easy. I'll keep going. But the tide soon turns, as you can see from the spin view on screen. If you are playing a progression, the bets will get bigger, the gaps will get wider, and the near misses will increase at times. This might leave you feeling like you are being cheated. The whole point of this Do Casinos Cheat series is to help players realise they can beat roulette if they develop a better understanding of how to analyse their previous results. That's something the fallacists will laugh at. Well, that brings us to the end of another session. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as we have enjoyed making it. If you can't wait to see what happens next, please make sure your notify settings are switched on and we will have another video for you very soon. See you next time.